A healthy heart pulsates with rhythm. But Deza's heart doesn't. You can feel your heart racing and skipping beats and doing all sorts of funny things. Des was diagnosed with a heart condition which affects over 150,000 Australians. It's called atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation is a condition that's characterised by an irregular heartbeat and it's due to abnormal electrical impulses arising in the atrium. The atrium is the top chamber of the heart that contracts with each electrical signal. If the electrical signals are disorderly, the heart doesn't effectively pump blood around the body. When the atria go into fibrillation, then that allows blood to form pools. It can become stagnant and create blood clots. And if those blood clots leave the heart and go to the brain, for example, that causes a stroke. It wasn't that long ago that Des was living an active life. Well, 12 months ago I was doing obedience with my dog. I was doing beach fishing. Um, all that's come to a halt. Why do you get emotional? You get frustrated with yourself. Um, especially when you're, you're uh, pretty active and it comes to a halt, and then you're limited what you can do. He's at the more severe end of the spectrum with regards to atrial fibrillation. Give me some big deep breaths through your open mouth. The longer you've been in it, the harder it is to get you out of it, and that's the case with Des. Desmond's only option now is surgery. Doctors will attempt to short-circuit those electrical signals which seem to be causing the problem. To do this, doctors perform a procedure called radiofrequency ablation. That is where we try and electrically disconnect the veins at the back of the heart that lead into the left atrium. We know that these veins are important in the initiation and maintenance of these abnormal electrical impulses. This is not a new technique, but the way in which surgeons plan to do it is. They'll be using this state-of-the-art robotic navigation system, the only one of its kind in Australia. It's much easier to control than manually, but it does give us that degree of precision. And our early data shows a slight reduction in procedural time. However, we're hoping that with increased experience that that's going to come down further. Desmond is having his final checks to ensure that there are no clots in his heart which may complicate the surgery tomorrow. It. Big swallow for us. They put an ultrasound down his throat to access images of his heart. So no clots essentially, and the heart looks pretty good. So Dr. McGavigan can do that procedure tomorrow. No problem. It's the day of the operation and Desmond is fairly relaxed. Doctors begin by feeding a catheter all the way up to the top of Desmond's heart. Once we've got all the catheters in the heart, we then sit at the robotic arm and leave the operating theatre. And then using a three-dimensional joystick, I can navigate the ablation catheter to anywhere within the, the chamber of interest. So how much more accurate is it using this 3D navigation system? Well, for every three millimetres I move my hand, it moves at one millimetre, so we can really get that precise millimetre by millimetre movement, which is very important when you consider that each of these lesions is only three millimetres in diameter. Is it channelling the schoolboy playing with the joystick and the computer games? I think that must have helped. <laughs> Skillfully, the software creates a 3D map of the heart, which means you don't need as many X-rays to see what's going on. And importantly, the surgeons can do it from the safety of the room outside. By using this robotic system, it not only halves the radiation dose for the patient, it reduces exposure to the doctor by 80%. I might just you know, move the ring onto the upper vein and stay scrubbed for a while. And... Okay. 
Two surgeons alternate at the controls to avoid fatigue during the five-hour operation. So, Andrew, are all these red dots where you've ablated the heart? Yes, that's right. Each red dot represents a three millimetre lesion or scar that's created by heating up the catheter tip using mm -hmm. radiofrequency energy. So how do you monitor whether or not you've been successful at disabling those signals? Well, we're hoping to see that these signals here start to reduce and eventually flatline. There is a chance that the surgeon may accidentally pierce a hole in the heart by applying too much pressure when the catheter singes the tissue. But this robotic system reduces that risk. We, we want to know that we're getting good contact, but you also need to know if your contact is too forceful because that's potentially hazardous. If we see the blue line start to track above the yellow line, that's a warning that we're getting a little bit too forceful with our contact and we should just pull the catheter back a millimetre or so and straight away uh, decrease the pressure of the catheter tip. After four hours and 300 ablations later, the doctors are happy with the results. Des is now in normal rhythm for the first time in 18 months, but there's certainly a chance that we'll have to come back and consolidate what we've done today. Hopefully the first procedure works, and yeah, we get back and, and live life. <laughs>